Back in episode 187, I reviewed the Fozzie P4 preamplifier, and in that review, I mentioned that I had done my own little A-B test against it and another preamplifier, which was much more expensive. I said it would be nice to get my friends together and do an A-B test, and that is what this video is about. I had already scheduled an A-B test, and with all the A-B tests, I rarely tell what the people are going to be a B, and such was the case with this one and that's why I didn't mention anything more in that particular video. The Kerry SLP 98 was reviewed in episode 184 and for those of you that don't remember it's a two-piece tube preamplifier with a separate piece for the power supply. In 1997 that guy sold for $3,800 or about $7,500 in 2025 US dollars. Kerry still sells that SLP 98 and it's been modernized a bit since then but they do offer that model and I think it's running around oh five thousand dollars let's say but the Fozzy P4 if you don't remember was $100. Now it has a separate power supply a little wall work for it so that's kind of what is going on in this particular video. As far as the get-together, it's kind of a fun event for people to get together and do a blind AV test between uh, two items. We had pizza and cookies and snacks and beer and wine and soda and all that kind of stuff. And several people from uh, Phoenix came up and attended. Of course, we had several folks from Tucson or the surrounding uh, areas of Tucson. And we even had somebody who happened to be in town from Ithaca, New York, I believe it was, that was uh, attending the event. And we had somebody who had just driven in from Silver City, New Mexico that attended. So altogether we had uh, 18 participants in the AB uh, test that determined the scores of the two items. Um, there were a few more people that didn't participate. I don't do the uh, actual scoring of it because I sort of know what's what although to be totally honest after i set things up i don't really have a good memory of what was being ab till the very end when i go follow the cables and see what was what but it was a rather fun event and the way that i do it and you'll see some of the setup here in a little bit i did some videos the items are hidden under a blanket obviously people could lift up the blanket but nobody uh, has done that that i know of and they're in a listening room. The speakers that were used were the same ones we used for our last AV test, which are the JBL 250 TIs. They are a very nice speaker, in my opinion. You'll see the little switch box uh, a little bit later. It's a real basic, uh, I'll call it a vintage AV switch box from probably the mid-90s or early 2000s. It actually has a uh, composite video input and output as well as an S video input and output but it's just a manual switch between the uh, two sources or you could do up to four sources and it has a single output the exact same cables were used going in and out of the units the source was a Bryston CD player and that went into a pair of Y cables which then went into each of the pre-amplifiers. The gain of each of the amplifiers and in this case the uh, balances on the carry were adjusted or at least one uh, of the balances on the carry needed to be adjusted to match it uh, better to the Fozzy. So at 1 kilohertz and 440 hertz the left and right channels of both of the preamplifiers are balanced to each other within probably about 10 millivolts I would say so um, that's kind of how I do the setup and then I use the sound pressure level meter uh, my Radio Shack uh, vintage SPL meter which I have checked its calibration against my Umic 1 calibrated microphone and it's fairly accurate for all intents and purposes and after everything's balanced we adjust the uh, volume levels so that we're putting out I would say between the mid 60s and mid 70s as far as the SPLs that people are going to listen to depending on which track there were 16 tracks on the CD with a list so they could skip forward to a certain uh, track if they wanted that particular music and that's kind of how the test went everybody had anywhere from uh, maybe five to ten minutes 
uh, to listen to the two items and just switch between them. And it's pretty easy. You just press the button, hold your head steady, and uh, you know try not to move while you're switching between the two. And then there's a five question uh, sheet to fill out as to which you preferred for uh, vocals or bass, that kind of thing. And we'll get into the data uh, results on that. So that's kind of just the gist of the test. And as I said, everybody seems to enjoy it. At the very end, I show what they were testing between. So that's kind of the scope of this video. I'll show you a little bit about the setup. And then I'm going to show the electrical performance of the uh, two units side by side just for uh, characteristics, uh, frequency response and THD, that kind of thing. And then there will be a summary of the data from the questionnaire. So that's kind of the scope of this particular video. This is the CD player that's going to be used. And as you can see, it's a Bryston BCD3. The two items are going to be switched with this old school switch box. It's totally passive, just switches. It has very good crossover and isolation between the channels. And so they can just select between the two sources, which will be one and two. You can see that the output of the CD player that are connected to Y cables, which then go into the appropriate channel for each of the preamps under test. And uh, those are the preamps under here and everything will be covered so people can't peek at what's going on. It's a little bit of a rat's nest, but that's kind of just the way it has to be. And, and then we're gonna use the Bryston 2B LP power amp, which goes over to these JBL 250 Ti loudspeakers. I thought we should start off looking at the performance differences between the Carry SLP-98 and the Fozzie P4. Now for the Fozzie, I'm using the 9 dB gain setting and the EQ bypass switch in the uh, back of the unit and the Carry SLP-98 with a one kilohertz signal put in is showing this response. And with the same signal going into the Fozzie P4, you can see it's got about a six, seven dB better SNR. Its THD is much, much lower, although the carries is pretty darn good. And the gains were set for zero dB of gain as best I could for both units. You can also see that the uh, THD plus noise for the carry is not nearly as good as the Fozzie's. Looking at the frequency response of the two, let's start over with the Fozzie. Now there is no balance control on the Fozzie and it's showing about a three tenths of a dB difference between the left and right channels. Whether you would actually hear that, I, I kind of would doubt it. And as far as when I do the setup, I did adjust the right gain on the uh, carry SLP 98 so that it was putting out the same voltage levels at 1 kilohertz and 440 hertz as did the Fozzie P4. So the fact that they're showing a bit of difference here didn't play into the AV testing. Now starting off at 10 hertz you can see there's just a little bit better performance for the carry SLP 98 but we're only down a tenth of a dB on the Fozzy P4. Now the Fozzy P4 is going out to 45 kilohertz and we're down about 0.35 dB. We're going out to 40 kilohertz here and we're down maybe two tenths of a dB. And if you look at 20 kilohertz, we're a tenth of a dB and we're, we'll just say a tenth of a dB for the Fozzy. So both of them have about the same high end frequency response. Looking at the harmonics, there is a big difference between the two. The carries over here, and this is taken with a two volt RMS signal going into them at one kilohertz. You can see the uh, second and third harmonic on the carry are much higher than the second and third harmonics on the Fozzie. Now our even harmonics are higher than the odd harmonics, at least the, the second harmonics are both higher than the odd or third harmonics on the carry. With the Fozzie, it's kind of a mixed bag. The left 
even harmonic is higher than the left odd harmonic, but the right even harmonic is lower than the right odd harmonic. So it's kind of a mixed bag, but they're down really small. It's, you know, minus 120 uh, dB down versus minus 60. So the harmonics are down about double, at, at least as far as the uh, dB. Looking at the noise level, our carries over here and the fozzies here. In this case, the inputs are terminated into shorts. And you can see we're oh, better than minus 120 dB V down for the carry versus about minus 125 dB down for the fozzy. So the fozzy is uh, much quieter than the carry. The first question that was asked for the AV participants, whose bass low frequency response did you prefer more? Now B is the carry and C is the fozzy. And you can see that statistically people preferred the number two, whose mid-range vocals did you prefer more? Ah, here we have more people preferring the fozzy than did the carry as far as mid-range and vocals. Whose high frequency response did you prefer more? Well, 50% for the carry versus 39% for the Fozzie. If you consider that 50% would be what you would get if you just flipped a coin, it's still pretty close because you've still got about 11% thinking that they were about the same. So I would say the high frequency response is uh, pretty close as far as preference between the two. Whose sound stage imaging did you prefer more? A slight edge to the carry as opposed to the Fozzie, 56% versus 33%. And last question, whose overall sound did you prefer more? And once again, 56% for the uh, carry versus 28 for the Fozzie with 17% saying about the same. Now, there were a lot of comments saying it was real hard to tell the difference between the two. And I think, you know, this kind of shows that because even 56%, 50%, it's pretty much a toss-up. When you start looking at above 60%, there's probably more weight in there as far as preference. If you flip a coin, 50% of the time you'll get heads and 50% of the time you'll get tails within a few percentage points. From the test results, there were two areas where we were in the 60%, which to me is a little bit more statistically significant, and that was, there was a higher percentage of people that liked the carry preamplifier for the bass response. And there were a higher percentage of the people that liked the Fozzie for the vocal mid-range area. So both those had the percentage in the 60%. So I would say that's probably statistically uh, more significant. Overall, there was a slight edge of people that preferred the carry preamplifier which was 56%. So it's really not that much larger percentage than when you just flipped a coin. And in fact, many people told me that the difference was just so close. And at the end of the test, they were surprised that they were testing the Fozzie P4 versus the Kerry SLP98. And they were thinking, wow, that's, they're pretty, pretty close. It was tough. There were some people that voted for the carry straight down all five questions. And there were several people that voted for the Fozzie straight down the line. So, you know, it, it was pretty close. However, I would say the carry preamplifier had a slight edge. My friend Richard, who that belonged to, was happy. <laughs> but overall, it was 56%. And when you add in the percentage of people that thought they were about the same, you know, they're both pretty darn close. And in my own experience, when I uh, originally AB'd them at my place, I thought they were pretty darn close. And that's why I decided to use those two for the uh, AB test for this get together. If you had different speakers, the results could change, I'm, I'm guessing. But with those speakers, under the conditions that were present, you know, same speaker, cables, everything was going through, the same power amplifier. So the only thing really different was the preamplifier. And, you know, they were pretty darn close. So hats off to Fozzie. Now, Fozzie did provide me the P4 for the review that I did back then, but I thought this would be an interesting thing. I've tested some IEMA gear against, uh, we did the Marantz 8B, and that was uh, very close. Uh, just 
I think they were about 50%. You have to look at the video, but th th those were very close between the two. Maybe the Morantz had a slight edge, but really no statistical difference. Like I said here, slight statistical difference between two of the characteristics, one of them going to the Fozzie, the other going to the carry. So that's kind of uh, this video. Uh, maybe in another six months or so, I'll try to figure out another thing we can A, B. And it's, it's kind of double blind, like I said. I set things up, but while I'm measuring, a friend was switching for me, so I didn't really know what was switching when I was adjusting the levels. And I didn't know for sure what was number A or uh, B, that kind of thing. I, I didn't really know till the end. So in some way it was a little bit double blind, but nobody knew they were testing two preamps. And so that's kind of what makes these things fun. As I was putting together this video, I realized there were a few things that I forgot to mention. I did mention the price of the Carry SLP-98P, but I did do a little bit more research and the same vintage carry SLP 98P, the P stands for having a phono input stage, is selling for about $2,500 here in the States. And for reference, this is October 2025, and the Fozzie P4 is about $100 on Amazon. So that's kind of where I got the prices that I used for this video's title. The other thing I should mention is the ages of the participants. With the exception of one female, it was all males, as you could guess. And the ages ran from probably the low to mid 50s to maybe 74 was the oldest person. So you can kind of figure that in. I've posted my hearing test results in one of the videos, but uh, I have no idea what the other folks' hearing uh, capabilities are, but that's just you know, a little factor that probably should be uh, mentioned. The other thing I didn't mention was that people were sitting probably about maybe 10 feet away from the speakers and, you know, not that that's important. They were all the same distance and, and that kind of thing. Um, they were able to switch between the tracks. Uh, if they didn't have to listen to a certain track, they could just kind of move forward to maybe music that they uh, thought they were more familiar with. So there wasn't any specific track that everybody listened to. One other thing that I didn't mention when I was showing the test data was that the Fozzy inverted the phase by 180 degrees from what came into the Fozzy versus what came out. Now both channels were very well matched as far as their phase differences and you could go back and watch the Fozzy P4 video and actually see the rise time and the phase difference. But I didn't measure that for the carry for whatever reason, and so I really can't compare that. But as far as the testing, the fact that one was 180 degrees out, I don't really think it would make a difference uh, in the overall preferences to what people found for either one. But that is just something that I thought I would throw out there just for consistency. So once again, if you liked the video, please give me a thumbs up. If you have not subscribed to the channel, uh, please do so. And if you have questions or comments, you can leave them in the appropriate area and I will respond to them. And you know, I thank you for watching. Until next time, I hope you have a great day and night.